We're going to take a look at diffusion today. Um, diffusion is simply defined as the process by which gas is transferred or gas moves across the blood gas barrier. So to understand diffusion we first need to understand what the blood gas barrier is. It's seen here on the left but I'm going to draw it a different way just so we have a few different uh, pictures of it in our mind. Keep in mind this is simply just a cartoon and not um, what it might actually look like, but uh, this is just to help you understand it a bit. So let me draw a now alveolus here, a sac in the respiratory zone of our lungs. And then let me draw the capillary that would be traveling by the alveolus. And just to simplify it, I'm going to give it a little bit of a directionality here. Um, an arrow so that we know that the blood is traveling in that direction. Obviously the vessels in our body don't have arrows on them but um, that's just to help you understand this a little bit more. And we know that the blood that's coming into the lung has a high partial pressure of carbon dioxide and a low partial pressure of oxygen. That's why we call it deoxygenated blood. However, when the blood leaves the lung, we know that it's been reoxygenated, so the partial pressure of oxygen has risen again, and the carbon dioxide we now are blowing out of our mouth, so the carbon dioxide uh, at some point must leave the blood and enter the alveolus. So let me draw that here. So what's going to happen is um, the carbon dioxide is going to leave the blood, enter the alveolus to be exhaled off, and oxygen is going to enter the blood from the alveolus so that we can reoxygenate the tissues of our body. And the blood gas barrier is just simply this area here between the alveolus and the capillary. Um, so this is what we're looking at here on the left side of the screen. Um, I've extrapolated it out for you so that we can uh, manipulate a little bit and understand how gas crosses this barrier. So let's put in a few things. We know that um, carbon dioxide is going to leave the capillary and it's going to enter the alveolus to be expelled. So let's put in carbon dioxide here. And then we know that O2, oxygen, is going to leave the alveolus and enter the capillary side of things to reperfuse our tissues. And I'm going to just for um, label sake, I'm going to call this side, alveolus side, the um, partial pressure uh, in the alveolus. And this can be for uh, CO2 and O2. And then over here, I'm going to call this partial pressure of this, whatever gas we're looking at, in the capillary. Again, this can be for O2 or CO2. And then we also know that this uh, blood gas barrier is going to have a certain area to it. Um, area being length times width. And then finally, we know that this blood gas barrier is going to have a certain thickness to it. Draw out thickness here. So these are the things that are going to affect the diffusion of gases across the blood gas barrier. And diffusion is defined or described by Fick's law. We may have seen Fick's law before, but um, we're going to use it again in this situation. And what this equation tells us is that the rate of transfer of a gas through this blood gas barrier is proportional to the area, so let me put here proportional to the area, proportional also to the proportional to the diffusion constant, which we'll define in just a moment, and finally proportional to the difference in partial pressure. So here let's put in our partial pressures partial pressure in the alveolus minus the partial pressure in the capillary. 
remember just as a quick note that gases dissolve, diffuse, or react according to their partial pressures, not according to their concentrations. And then let's add in one more uh, detail here. We know that the rate of transfer of this gas is inversely proportional to the thickness. So we'll use T for thickness. And then let's define the diffusion constant that I said we'd come back to. The diffusion constant D is equal to the solubility of the gas divided by the square root of the molecular weight of the gas. So let's ask the question, which um, in this situation with this blood gas barrier seen here on the left, which would, dis or which would uh, diffuse faster, CO2 or O2? So the areas are the same, so we'll disregard that. The thickness is the same in this situation. We can assume that the uh, partial pressures, the difference between the partial pressures are uh, pretty similar. So we're looking at the diffusion constant here, and we know that the molecular weights also are relatively similar for CO2 and O2, the only difference being the carbon atom. And, um, but, but however, we do know that the solubility is much higher in carbon dioxide than it is in O2. So we're going to see a much faster rate of diffusion in carbon dioxide than we'll see in oxygen. Thinking through this, if we change the blood gas barrier in some way, if we made it more thick, what would happen to the diffusion? Well, if the thickness went up, diffusion would go down. And if the area, if we change the area somehow, or the amount of space that's being diffused, um, let's say we increase the area, then we'd see diffusion go up. And then finally, if we uh, change the partial pressure, the difference in partial pressures across the blood gas barrier, let's say we increase the partial pressure difference, we would see diffusion go up in this situation. So we have a few different um, ways to manipulate this equation, or a few different ways that we'll see this equation um, affect the diffusion of gas in our lungs. And this is precisely what happens in disease states. So in asthma, in COPD, in stiffening or fibrosis of the lung, we're going to see the diffusion change in the lung based on this exact principle of Fick's Law. In the next video, we'll take a look at uh, precisely how those things change in different disease states.